Ladies and gentlemen, members of the parliament. On night, these were complex negotiations on very complex issues. We agreed on the recovery package and the European budget. And this moment, it's my conviction, is pivotal in European history. We acted fast and with urgency. In less than two months, we hammered out a deal of more than 1.8 trillion euros. And this response is massive. Compared to the size of its economy, Europe's response is greater than that of the United States or China. In fact, this agreement is first in many ways. This is the first time in European history that we agree to borrow collectively to finance expenditure. It's also the first time, the first time that our budgetary funds are connected to our climate ambition. And it's the first time our budget will be directly linked to the rule of law. I am convinced that Europe is a force for action. Dear colleagues, today I stand before you with that agreement in hand, endorsed by unanimity by all 27 leaders. Everyone had to give something in order to get something. It's a strong and ambitious deal for Europe and for Europeans. It's fair, balanced and groundbreaking. Why? Because it will boost our three common goals, convergence, resilience and transformation. On the recovery fund, first, the recovery fund next generation EU is a one-off measure to address the impact of COVID-19 and I would like to stress that the total size of the recovery fund is 750 billion euros, 390 in grants and 360 in loans. And these funds will be targeted at the hardest hit regions at sectors. It targets 30% of the MFF and the recovery fund to fight in climate change. And we will make sure the recovery fund money is well spent by ensuring it in solid governance. Sur le budget. On the budget, we're deciding to propose 1.074 billion euros. The commitment, mobilization, and the desire to succeed with these means have pushed our efforts then to reduce disparities in the EU, to boost convergence, and promote transformation that's so urgent. Now, obviously, I know that the MFF, I know that some people are pointing to the cuts with respect to the Commission proposal, but from my side, just so you can get some perspective, look at the starting point. It is the money that today is spent for each of the policies of the EU. If we compare it with today, we can see that MFF, together with the Recovery Fund, are additional funds. It is additional to the amounts that are mobilized today in different areas, Digital, Horizon Europe, Erasmus. And finally, we are proposing a special reserve connected to Brexit because we take on board the fact that with a deal or without a deal, if that's likely, we will have to support those countries, those sectors that are most directly affected by the economic fallout from Brexit. Now, I know there is one issue that mobilizes a great deal of attention here. It also did during the summit, namely the rebates. Now, it's true that the rebates have been kept for one country, increased for four others, and it's true that that was part of the overall package agreement because we were aware of the need to mobilize monies for the recovery fund. So there was a political agreement that gave rise to that part of the decision. And then finally, the own resources. We've had a lot of debates, formal, informal, also here, in connection with this very crucial issue, because we consider that own resources could be a turning point in the way Europe envisages its future, and without which, I believe, we've actually delivered 
on top of what could have been imagined by specifying some political roadmaps. And in particular, let me flag up that we have an additional point with respect to the Commission's idea. In other words, that we're going to start the repayments under this MFF, this coming MFF, not the next one. And that is a very powerful tool politically to encourage the decision. We commit ourselves thereby, and we hope the Parliament will, and the heads of state and government are committing to this. There's the issue of the carbon border tax, digital financial transaction tax, the ETS system, plastic waste. There will be a lot on the table for a political democratic debate, real European democracy, but also in the national parliaments. And that's a good thing because we will be having this debate on uh, the crucial steer of where we want the EU to go. And finally, the question of the role of the European Parliament. Obviously, that's an essential issue, and I'm quite sure it's going to be debated here, quite apart from what already stands in the institutional setup and the role of the Parliament and its legislative work. And the significant amount of work is going to have to do with respect to the RRF, the Recovery and Resilience Fund. Para 11 of our conclusions where we say there should be joint political sharing of the Council, Commission and Parliament on annual scrutiny of expenditure, and I'm quite sure we will continue the discussion on that. And finally, one point that is very close to my heart. It is five years now since I've had the responsibility to sit at the Council, and now I can see for the first time in five years... I've chaired the summit. We've had a very long debate. And we looked at one another and discussed face-to-face -face the rule of law, this fundamental issue. Now, of course, uh, this is not a conclusion of the debate, but it is an opening. And that's why I am delighted that what we're presenting to you actually sets out this link, this conditionality between the financial issue and governance, the issue of rule of law. Everyone will have to play their part. The Commission, obviously, in connection with the institutional setup, the European Parliament, the European Council as well, in connection with its responsibility to give a political steer. They will not be able to avoid coming back regularly again and again to this subject, and I will ensure that this central issue, this vital, fundamental issue for Europe will remain at the heart of the debate. Let me conclude by saying the following, ladies and gentlemen. A few days ago, we topped 600,000 deaths worldwide because of COVID. COVID has shaken us. It has completely overturned the way our democratic societies were functioning. We had to restrain fundamental freedoms and our healthcare systems were greatly tested. And I'm quite sure that a post-COVID world will have to be different. It will have to be more committed, more solid, more grounded because of the needs of humanity that we can all see before us. So the deal that I'm presenting you today, to my mind, of course, is a financial deal, but it's much more than that. Because through the debate that we're opening now, it is really about the meaning and the direction that we wish to give to this European project in the coming years. That's what's on the agenda. And I do believe this is a historic moment. And allow me a moment of romanticism. I think it was a historic moment to decide on a roadmap for own resources, to decide that we were going to take up common debt to invest and effectively what we've done then is renewing our European marriage vows for 30 years. We have confirmed European unity and more than ever I believe that we're sending a clear signal to the Europeans, one of confidence, a robust one, one of a solid situation, the signal to the rest of the world that Europe is present, Europe is solid, Europe is on, Europe is on its feet. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Michel. I now should like to give the floor to the President of the Commission, Madame von der Leyen. The floor is yours, Madame.
600 000. 